हेलो गुड आफ्टरनून फ्रेंड्स थैंक यू बीइंग देयर फॉर द सेशन एंड वी आर मीटिंग अगेन विद द सेम सीरीज ऑफ मदर टीचर्स एंड होम्योपैथी टुडे वी विल गोइंग टू डिस्कस वन मोर टॉपिक द टॉपिक व्हिच इज जनरली नेवर कंसीडर्ड्स विद होम number of times we never get a patients for such types of diseases but my uh, aspect of looking that topic is again a different i used to get such types of patients in my practice and that's why i want to share this topic it is nothing but the drop seeds a generalized edema all over the body and related mother tinctures so this these types of patients generally comes specifically those patient who have taken allopathy treatment a lot and they comes to you a number of times they might be old patients senile patients in your opd you can get such dropsies or they are quite commonly and if you understand them properly then you can approach with them in with proper medicine homeopathic medicine and that's why in short today we will discuss first the what may be the common reasons basically when a dropsy is there that is generalized edema which is also called as a general anasarca condition we have to consider two important causes if the pulse is uh, if the patient is old enough there might be a, both the causes that is there might be a cardiac cause or there might be a renal cause so behind drops is generally these two important causes are there if it is the renal dropsy it is associated with rest of the features so renal dropsy the edema is there associated puffiness of the face is there associated with typical heart symptom secondary hypertension might be there with a oligouria sometimes even very less urine formation scanty urine which is strong enough all those features and patient always complains that he is having some problem with him, passing the urine these are quite common features whenever it is a renal dropsy but if it is not renal dropsy and it is because of the cardiac dropsy is there which is because of congestive cardiac failure it is there then the there is a different effect whenever it is cardiac dropsy it may secondarily produce the renal dropsy the because of less blood supply to the kidneys it can affect the kidneys and also produce so it is a complex dropsy which can be developed in such types of cases in whenever it is a cardiac dropsy it is always because of the weak heart the heart musculature become weak and as it has become weak there is always a mm, this chronic passive venous congestion which is quite common on examination you can that patient is breathless there is a basal crepitations if you ask uh, clearly uh, you can auscultate the chest and you can find that patient become breathless on little bit walking and that itself suggest that patient is having a weak heart so in such conditions we have ample remedies in our homeopathy in fact we have much more remedies than the old school treatment and that today i will discuss few mother tinctures which are very very helpful in such conditions first whenever a patient comes to you first you have to understand exactly what type of dropsy it is whether it is renal dropsy or whether it is a cardiac dropsy and accordingly you have to think about the patient so basically investigations are necessary if you feel it is renal dropsy basic investigations you can find it out that ask the patient to go for urine routine examination the serum creatinine then the blood urea so renal function tests do gives you details about the things regarding if it is a renal dropsy and you can find it out and ask the patient to go for usg sonography and you can find it out the even the kidney condition in that kind uh, case sometimes even specific scan can be done so all those things matters a lot in order to diagnose and if you feel it is because of the 
<clears throat> basically heart condition again you have to investigate it properly so 2d is very important 2d echocardiography the ecg first then followed by 2d echocardiography clinical examination is always important so first always comes the clinical examination you have to take the pulse then you have to feel the pulse basically in cases of cardiac propsis the pulse is not it is a weak very feeble sometimes even you imperceptible so that that you have to look for in case of renal dropsy it is exactly the opposite because because of the hypertension which develops over there so clinically you have to correlate and accordingly all investigations necessary investigations you have to ask the patient to go for if you diagnose it clearly then it becomes simple task for you to treat that patient in both types of cases most important aspect is that to you you have to go with the old detail case study so you have to understand that patient from all aspects so the day, the way we used to deal with the other patient in the similar pattern you have to deal with all those patients so you have to reach towards the chronic constitutional and demasmatic remedy if patient is the patient's problem is chronic enough but in such conditions you have to utilize your weapons with a homeopathic management and in such conditions what is important is the use of mother tinctures i will share today four remedies out of which three remedies are for the cardiac dropsy and one remedy for the renal dropsy so we'll discuss those remedies uh we'll start with the first mother tincture which i used to use in such conditions is the aposinum aposinum cannabinum so aposinum cannabinum which is also called as an indian hemp this remedy is very specific for renal uh, cardiac dropsy and secondarily it produces a renal dropsy in fact it is the cardiac condition which is at the fault in cases of the um, aposinum and because of less blood supply to the kidneys secondarily kidneys are involved producing a nephritis picture also so it is a complex picture you can get in ap aposinum aposinum the condition is that that there are valvular heart troubles are also present so there might be a tricuspid regurgitation the mitral regurgitation which is quite common over there sometimes even the hypertrophied heart you can see over there dilated heart hypertrophied heart with cardiomyopathy these are very important features which you can find it out with the help with uh, this aposinum second important thing which you can get over there and secondarily when this dropsy develops because of the cardiac problem it produces generalized dinosarca condition and sometimes these people show typical hydrocephalus conditions so here both the remedies aposinum as well as its close relative apis both have hydrocephalus condition and hydrocephalus is secondary to this second congestive cardiac failure is quite common in such cases but most important part whenever aposinum uh, is there it is always thirsty that is in fact the best difference differentiating factor between the epis mellifica and aposinum epis is absolutely thirstless aposinum is absolutely thirsty second important thing which we have to consider over there is that the epis is hot whereas aposinum is chilly that is another important difference which you can find it out over there uh, because of this congestive cardiac failure as we know the pathology it produces chronic passive venous congestion and because of which the lungs gets congested and the hydrothorax develops so hydrothorax is secondary to the cardiac failure and you can get typical um, on auscultation you get a fine crepes at the base of the lung indicating that lung is also affecting because of because of the um, uh, this cardiac weakness so cardiac weakness is more important followed with the uh then the bright's disease the renal dropsy which comes out associated with gastric troubles 
So Bright's disease is the old terminology. Nowadays, it is nothing but the nephritis, which is there. So it is a nephritis, glomerular nephritis, which is earlier labeled by the name above Bright's disease. Arrhythmias are quite common with the aposinum, low arterial tension, and the cyanosis, secondary cyanosis. Cyanosis because low output through the heart and it produces a cyanosis. So typical picture of decreased cardiac output, cardiac failure, followed with uh, mm, volvular heart troubles, uh, associated with hydrothorax, associated with hydrocephalus, with thirst, with a chilly patient. This mother tincture plays very vital role. And secondary effect on the kidneys producing the glomerular nephritis. This remedy is a very useful remedy in your day-to-day -day practice. And you can use the mother tincture quite safely. You can give the mother tincture 5 drops or 10 drops 3 times a day uh, in a half cup of water. And this works very nicely. I have seen very good results with the aposina. In such types of cases, to it, it is also called as a diuretic, homeopathic diuretic, decreasing the mm, congestion, the water retention in the body, and automatically it automatically it decreases the strength. So this is too important. It is a good remedy for the congestive cardiac failure. So first we have discussed the aposinum cannabin. Second important remedy which everyone knows is nothing but the digitalis, which is also called as a fox glow. <coughs> this remedy, I want to share a clinical experience. I will not go through the boix uh, part, but I will discuss one, one of the important use of it. It is a digitalis. The common principle is digoxin over there. And same medicine is used in allopathy also. They use this for the arrhythmias. And to stop that arrhythmia, this remedy works uh, in a strong manner. In fact, it stops number of times the fibrillation over there. In the similar manner, we can use this remedy in homeopathy. So whenever there is a uh, specifically the auricular fibrillation is there, this remedy plays a very important role. I, I have considered it pathologically. It is a very weak heart. The pulse is absolutely very weak, scarcely perceptible, very low cardiac output, and a very weak heart. This remedy is a very, very, very important. Whenever the pulse is out of proportion or there are misbeats over there, even slightest movement, the person becomes breathless in such types of cases. Digital is plays very vital role. Sometimes the weak output is so less that it produces the collapse condition. So collapse, it is a secondary because less blood is applied to the brain because of low output, it produces immediately um, you know, vesovagal shock and patient can collapse over there. It is also a good remedy for tobacco heart. So you can find it out that those effects over there, sometimes you get the dilated heart, you get the hypertrophy of the heart over there. The specifically, the myocarditis, this remedy works on more on the myocardium. The earlier remedy, aposinum, which we have discussed, it has specific action on the endocardium, whereas this digitalis is having very specific action on myocardium. The myocarditis is quite common with digitalis. Endocarditis is quite common with the aposinum. Then it is a mitral disease producing a congestive cardiac failure. Think of a digitalis where you get the arrhythmias more there. So, if you want to, if the arterial flutter is there, the auricular fibrillation is there, and you cannot, you cannot count the pulse. It is so fast, the heart is beating so fast that you cannot count. This remedy plays very, very, very important role. In fact, this is, uh, this remedy is used in both the ways. It can be used in mother tincture or it can be used in lower dilutions. I have tried it with lower dilutions. I have used it in 6C potency. 
and six C potency, it has worked number of times. So with the weak heart, when you want to give the strength to the heart and uh, you have to stop that fibrillation, digital is plays a very, very, very vital role. Uh, these, these are the two important remedies which we can we have discussed. One more remedy which is rarely used but which is also one of the important remedy to give a strain to the heart is the stropanthus. It is called a stropanthus hispidus. hispidus. So stropanthus hispidus is again a comb seed of remedy prepared from the plant. Again having a similar type of picture. Here also you can get that tobacco heart. So this tobacco, see this tobacco is producing a lot of effects on the heart musculature, making it to contract so strongly and ultimately leading to the weakness of the heart. And still people consume the tobacco. If you find the patients in your opinion and they are having the tobacco habit, it is your duty to tell them that you have to stop the tobacco, otherwise don't return to me. You should be very strict regarding the uh, regarding all those things that telling the patient all that they should stop the tobacco they should stop the alcohol or the drugs or etc and be strict you, you should be so confident to tell them and then they can stop otherwise they never stop the thing. so you should be very strong regarding all those things stropanthus is also a very important remedy a muscle poison it is called a, and it's specifically a striped muscles which gets very specifically um, affected over there it increases the strength or contractile power of this striped muscles and second important thing the it has a direct action on heart producing increasing the systole increasing the systole means it contracts it gives the strength for the heart to contract strongly so that output will be increased. And second important action, which is explained over there, is it diminishes the rapidity. So if heart is not contracting completely, definitely it has to work fast and there is always a tachycardia. And in such, a, such types of condition, to decrease the heart rate, at the same time, increase the output, strophanthus plays a very vital role. In fact, it is also called as a, a tonic for the heart. It is a general tonic for the heart musculature. So it works on the heart musculature, strengthen the tone of the heart, uh, weak heart. So enlarged heart because of the or dilated heart and which requires a strength to which uh, label is given that it is cardiomyopathy. And that cardiomyopathy can be tackled with the help of this stropanthus mother tincture and it gives a strain to the heart of the patient. Then there is a, an, one, two more things which are mentioned by Boric that is arteriosclerosis. This remedy plays a very vital role. So we have discussed on that day while discussing the cratagus that is also having action on the arteriosclerosis and uh, removing the deposits in the atherosclerosis cratagus. This remedy is also important. Generally, these patients having an irritable heart and these people are corpulent patients. Means they are strong. They are fat people having a weak heart. So fat people having a weak heart, dilated heart, having a cardiomyopathy and low out, um, output along with increased um, heart rate think about this propanthus mother danger it also helps uh, to revive those patients give them a strength and they become strong whenever the heart becomes strong so these are the three important mother dangers which you can use in your practice quite commonly in specifically in such types of cases cardiac dropsies or cardiac um, pathology so Cardiac pathology you can tackle. There are much more remedies, but these three mother tinctures can be used in such types of cases. Dose mentioned by the um, boric is also a mother tincture or lower dilutions in case of stropanthus 
I have used it in mother tincture form, and in uh, my practice, I have seen the results with stropanthus. So these are three important uh, remedies which we have discussed regarding the cardiac dropsy, and we'll discuss one remedy from the for the renal dropsy. Renal dropsy, or it is called also called as the dropsy caused because of the kidney failure or glomerular nephritis or which is also called as a Bright's disease. The remedy which you know and which is quite commonly prescribed remedy in our homeopathy is Apis mellifica, the honeybee. Apis, again I will going to discuss or share my experiences with Apis. We know that Apis is very good remedy for number of conditions. It's not a just organ remedy. It has a very specific action on different systems. Basically, it has on skin, it produces erysipelatous inflammation, the redness, the congestion over there, producing typical vesicular eruptions. Erysipelatous condition associated with the edema, if it has been there, always never forget the FS millimeter. Generalized anasarca is there, but here the fault is more commonly at the renal level, not at the cardiac level. So it is very specifically mentioned for the bride's disease, which is also called as the glomerular nephritis, the parenchymatous tissue of the kidney, which gets affected, the inflamed, ultimately leading to less formation of urine, sometimes oligourea, sometimes even anuria, sometimes your urination associated with a lot of strangurine. So patient feels a lot of pain while passing the urine. This is very good remedy for the insect stings that produces typical edema over there. The edema of the um, mellifica, it is you can see the puffiness of the face, the lower upper lids both are swollen in mellifica, and eyes become small because of the edema. And in such types of conditions, if you um, if the patient is thirstless absolutely and all the problems getting aggravated because of heated, heating or because of the heat generated over there or during summer weather or because of heat, the patient might go into the convulsions. Think about the APIS. So it is a hot remedy basically, requ uh, likes open air very close to the pulsatilla it looks, but APIS is more deeper in action than the pulsatilla. When you think pulsatilla, pulsatilla is a second stage of inflammation which we which is closely related with the um, Kali self or Kali muraticum which we have discussed in a piece this process is very stronger more deeper an inflammatory process is so strong that it used to produce uh, edema over there or generalized anasarca over there and it helps in such types of cases Thirstlessness is characteristic over there. We have discussed that whenever we have discussed the aposinum, aposinum is a very good remedy for alcoholic toxic effects. Epis, it is comparatively less, but in aposinum, definitely you can get that acute alcoholism and effects of alcoholism can be tackled with the help of aposinum. It has a specific action on liver also. But in APIS, APIS is having action all over the systems, so different systems getting uh, affected. It is also a good remedy even for the um, hydrocephalus. So meningitis, hydrocephalus, a shrill which develops over there, which is also called as cryencephalic, is quite common with the APIS mellifica. So this remedy is a very, very important remedy at the clinical level, you can use this remedy in, in such types of cases. Generally, two, two, three important features should be associated. First is hot patient, second is thirstlessness, third is better in open air, and fourth is generalized anasarca. Then you must think about the Epis mellifica. Epis mellifica I have used in potencies in my practice. Uh, I have a mother tincture. Very rarely I have used the mother tincture of Apis mellifica. I am using it right from the 60 to the CM also. 
but whenever you have a patient of insect stings or insect bites my suggestion is always that you do ap6 in repeated doses low potency is very useful it works so fast and it removes the condition very early occasionally you require 30 but when you are considering epismerifica not for insect stings but on the basis of uh, constitutional as a constitutional remedy depending on considering all the features then you can go for high 30 200 mm or further potencies epismerifica the mind you have to if you are getting clear cut mind the typical accordness of the epismerifica there are much more features of the epis are there Uh, on the basis of that when you are considering the epis mellifica then you can prescribe it in the higher potency so these are the four remedies which we have discussed in today's session uh with a little bit therapeutics regarding those so these are very helpful remedies and be confident when prescribing those remedies never causes any trouble never causes any problem for the patient so these are very important remedies in your practice and you start handling all those cases without keeping any any grudge in your mind it never causes any trouble over there so thank you being there and again a special thanks to all of you uh, because you are there every time uh, we have to increase the strength of homeopaths in our this divine school of homeopathy so i request all of you ask your friends ask your students or colleagues to join our this divine school of homeopathy on youtube and subscribe the channel and learn the homeopathy in simplified way so i am quite sure that you are getting little bit confidence to prescribe and uh, use homeopathic remedies homeopathic mother tincture the biochemics and bio combinations in your practice and i expect good success for you in practice till that till tomorrow thanks a lot we'll meet again for tomorrow session with again mother tincture or some something else i don't know i will think before lecture thanks a lot we'll meet tomorrow again thank you